okay in this lecture we will be discussing another example for solving green's function so let us consider a string tied between two ends tied between two ends and subjected to an external force say f of x so the idea is like you have to solve this uh, particular problem so what we are having is let's say this tells you about the displacement of the string so this is my string along the x direction and let me say my string is tied at point x equal to 0 and some point x equal to l right and if I were to give a function f of x then how does the equation look like the equation of the steady state for the string will be d squared u by dx squared where u is the displacement of the string equal to f of x with the boundary conditions u at x equal to 0 should remain 0 and u at x equal to l should also remain 0 so this is what we want to solve and so we want to use the Green's function approach so the Green's function approach tells us that uh, we have to solve for d squared g so what we do is basically we try to apply a pointed force okay at this uh, particular point let's say x equal to xi let me say this point is x equal to xi so what happens to the string is it uh, sort of takes a shape like that because of this force so basically it is like a cloth line on which you are uh, placing a small cloth here okay of infinitesimally small length or width you can say which is playing on this so that's because of that this is this is an exaggerated version of this. so you have basically something like this. so if i were to make this a unit impulse if this were to become a unit impulse at x equal to xi then the solution of the equation that we are looking for is d squared of g at xi that is the impulse applied at xi should be equal to basically i can write this equation as d squared u by dx squared equal to f of x by t right so but then that f of x by t see this can be written like this dx squared equal to f of x by capital T so we can call this as capital F of X so basically we are having a unit impulse that means we are applying a delta function at xi so the solution of the equation for x minus xi for unit impulse so we will straight away look for what the Green's function should be if I have a unit impulse at x equal to xi so this is the equation that I need to solve let's call this equation 1 now we can see that this entire problem can be divided into two regions region 1 where x is less than xi and region 2 where x is greater than xi so what should your Green's function do the Green's function should satisfy at x equal to 0 the boundary condition u of x comma x equal to 0 equal to 0 will, you know, will convert it to this and similarly we should have the Green's function at x equal to l to also satisfy the boundary condition it may not go there okay so in region 1 region 1 we have x less than xi and the solution is basically because even for x less than xi this will be 0 so d squared g by dx uh, squared equal to 0 that means solution is g of x comma xi equal to ax plus b simple right so in this region 1 let me call the Green's function as g1 so this should satisfy this first condition so that means at x equal to 0 you should you will have a into 0 plus b equal to 0 so b equal to 0 so basically g1 of x comma xi this is how it is written x with the unit impulse acting at xi is equal to a times x we don't know what is a in region 2 again 
for which you have x greater than psi you still have g2 of x comma psi to have let us say some other constant cx plus d and this will satisfy the boundary condition at the other end that is g2 at x equal to l or oh, here also we should have said x equal to 0 comma psi uh, so that is not uh, true g2 of x comma x equal to l comma psi should be 0 implies c times l plus d equal to 0 implies c equal to uh, d equal to minus c times l. So g2 of x comma psi will come out to be c times x minus l let me call it 3. So now we need to determine what are A and C. We need to determine what is A and what is C. So first thing that we observe is this particular string is continuous. So G1 at x comma z uh, should be equal to G2 of x comma z at x equal to z. So G of x comma z is continuous implies we should have a times xi to be equal to c times xi minus l. So we can uh, from this obtain let us say a. So we get a equal to c times xi minus l by xi. So a and c are related to this equation. Now second thing that we want to observe is that there is a discontinuity. This slope here is negative and the slope here is positive. So dg by dx has got a discontinuity at x equal to psi. That is the next thing that we need to understand. So dg of x comma psi by d psi has discontinuity at x equal to psi. So how to obtain this? To obtain this, we have to integrate this equation 1 between say xi minus epsilon and xi plus epsilon that is as you go from x less than xi to x greater than xi and then setting epsilon tend into 0 you will get the exact value of the uh, discontinuity at x equal to xi. So when you integrate between xi minus epsilon to xi plus epsilon d squared g of x comma xi by dx squared dx this will give you integral xi minus epsilon to on the other side delta of x minus xi d xi now dx so on the right hand side we have 1 because delta function will only survive at x equal to xi and everywhere else it is 0 so you get 1 on integration and on the left hand side we get dg of dg by dx between xi minus epsilon and xi plus epsilon. So what we have is dg by dx between xi minus epsilon and xi plus epsilon. So we can write this as dg at xi plus epsilon comma xi by dx but uh, xi plus epsilon means x is greater than xi so the solution is g2 minus dg of xi minus epsilon xi by dx. So this is x is less than so this this solution should be dg1 so if you substitute these two that is dg2 dg2 will give you c as the answer and dg1 by dx will give you a as the answer so c minus a equal to 1 so we get here uh, from this we can write c equal to 1 plus a okay c equal to 1 plus a. So if we substitute this c equal to 1 plus a here then we can solve for a okay and so that would uh, give us a equal to 1 plus a times xi minus l by xi so that xi l multiply here. So this will give you xi minus l 1 into xi 1 into minus l plus a xi minus a l. So basically you have an a xi on the left hand side and you have an a xi on the right hand side. So you can take the a l that side. So you get a times l 
equal to xi minus l or a equal to xi minus l by l. Now substituting a equal to xi minus l by l here we get c. So c equal to 1 plus xi minus l by l. So that is psi by l and minus 1 so that gets cancelled so equal to c equal to psi by l. So now you got both a and c. So therefore we obtain the Green's function. So g of x comma xi is equal to g1. g1 is basically a times x. So a is xi minus l times x by l. This is for 0 less than equal to x less than equal to xi. And c, c is xi by l. So xi by l into x minus l. So that is for xi less than equal to x less than equal to l. So this is how we obtained the Green's function by solving the problem for a unit impulse. Right? And then the total solution will be u of x will be equal to now integral 0 to l g of x comma xi into f of xi d xi in spatial domain. So one of the important things one has to observe is that g of x comma xi is symmetric. That is basically you can say g of x comma xi is equal to g of xi comma x but one should be careful about changing these also correctly. Okay. So these are the important uh, aspects of uh, Green's function. Basically Green's function is a solution of the non-homogeneous problem where you substitute the non-homogeneous function as the delta function. Delta function remember is a distribution. Second thing g of x comma xi or g the Green's function is symmetric. Of course it was not symmetric in the case of uh, time. Uh, time problem that we have considered before. Okay, But in this particular case it is symmetric and uh, the first derivative that is dg by dx has a jump discontinuity at x equal to xi where the impulse unit impulse has been uh, given and finally of course g of x comma xi is symmetric so these are some of the properties of the Green's function next we will see how to apply this idea to a more general problem like an Strum-Lovely equation thank you